Welcome to another James Explains video, and today we're looking at another one of Matt Parker's maths puzzles. In this puzzle, we have a train. This train has a certain fuel capacity. It needs to get to Party Town, and it has a certain length of track to cover to get there. For every length of track this train travels, it consumes one unit of fuel. However, as it's coal powered, it's able to offload any amount of fuel at the side of the track for later use. It can also travel backwards, again at one unit of fuel per length of track. Also, at its starting point, there is an unlimited supply of fuel, so whenever it gets back there, it can refuel again to its complete capacity. The solution for how it can travel six lengths of track with a capacity of five lengths of fuel can be found in the original video. Follow the link in the description to see it for yourself. Given we know the solution for six lengths of track, the puzzle was to work out the minimum amount of fuel required if the train has to travel eight lengths of track instead. The further thought puzzle included in the video was how can this be generalized for any given capacity of fuel and any given length of track. To make this easier, we can just look at the ratio of fuel capacity to track length, as a train that can hold five units of fuel can travel five lengths of track just as easily as a train holding 10 units of fuel can travel 10 lengths and one holding 15 units can travel 15 lengths. So let's look at what effect various ratios can have on our fuel usage. We will take our train with X units of fuel and assume that Party Town is quite nearby. For any length of track less than or equal to X, this is quite simple. The ratio of fuel used to track length is just one to one as it can do it on a single trip with just a single load of fuel. But what happens when the length of track exceeds the fuel capacity of the train? Well, with a full fuel capacity, the train will be able to travel X length of track. But then how much will it need to travel the remaining length of track? Assuming the fuel is dropped at the extent of its range, we can say that the remaining fuel required will match the remaining length of track. This refueling will also need to occur at a one-to-one -one ratio. To make things easier to conceptualize, we can break the journey up into two types of trips. Trip one will involve the train traveling to a fuel stop, dropping fuel and returning to its starting location. Trip two will be the final trip where the train travels the whole distance to Party Town, collecting the fuel required as it goes past. So we know this can be achieved by picking up fuel on the way, but where should this fuel be dropped in the first place? To try to work this out, Let's take an example of a train with fuel capacity to travel three quarters of the length to Party Town. We can say first of all that the fuel will need to be somewhere in the first three quarters of the track, otherwise the train would not be able to reach the refueling location. Secondly, we can say the fuel will also need to be in the final three quarters of the track, as once it's picked up the fuel, it will need to be able to make it the rest of the way to Party Town. From these two constraints, we can see the fuel needs to be located somewhere here in this middle section. But we still have the same problem. Where within this middle section should the fuel be located? Let's think about the other trip now, where the train needs to deposit the fuel. It will need to travel from its starting point to the fuel drop and back. It makes sense then for us to keep this trip as short as possible to try to save fuel. Therefore, the optimal location will be at the very start of its possible range. This is where the remaining distance to Party Town is equal to the full fuel capacity of the train. But how much fuel will we need to deposit there? One thing we know is that to travel the remaining distance, we will need the fuel to be at full capacity. This means the amount of fuel will need to be the same amount that the train consumes to reach the fuel drop. Let's call this amount Z, where Z is the difference between Y and X. Now, to deposit Z amount of fuel at this location, the train will firstly need to travel Z distance then deposit Z fuel, then return Z distance again. This requires a total of three Z fuel to add the extra Z distance to our trip. So this is how our fuel consumption looks. For the first X length, we use fuel at a one to one ratio. Any distance further than that will be at a three to one ratio. However, this too has its limitations. To be able to transport Z capacity of fuel Z distance, then Z must be less than or equal to one third the capacity of the train. So to accommodate any extra distance traveled before reaching the limit of the first Z distance, 
let's add a distance Z2. As you would imagine, getting enough fuel to the start of Z1 to accommodate a full capacity trip will require multiple trips to the start of Z1 and enough fuel to return to and from the starting point. Let's look at it as a tree diagram, starting with the maximum range possible with a full capacity fuel. To travel further than this, we will need a fuel deposit and a trip out to that fuel deposit. To get this fuel deposit out there, we need one trip out and another trip back. This is our previously mentioned Z1 range. When adding our Z2 range, we again need fuel at the max range for all of these trips, as well as extensions for these trips. Each of these will also require a trip out to deposit the fuel and a trip back afterwards. Another way to look at this is that the first X distance requires one X of fuel, the next one third X distance will require fuel at a rate of three times the first X, then the next one third X will require three times that, and again another one third X distance will require three times that amount, and so on. So now our scale looks more like this, with a one to one ratio of the first X, a 3 to 1 ratio for the next section, 9 to 1 for the following section, 27 to 1 for the section after that, and so on. These charts and graphs look very similar to the ones that have been shown in the news recently, as they are both examples of exponential growth. Players of Kerbal Space Program and rocket scientists would likely recognise this too, as it is very similar to the rocket equation, which calculates the exponentially increasing amount of fuel required to achieve higher speeds with rockets. It is essentially the same thing going on with our train, where exponentially more and more fuel is required to travel longer distances. So let's go back to the original puzzle we've been posed. We can see that the ratio of fuel capacity to length of track is 5 to 8, which can be converted to a ratio of 1 to 1.6. Let's break each of these sections down to see how much fuel is required to travel all the way to Party Town. The first section is lengths ranging from 0 to 1, giving a total length of 1, and at a fuel to distance ratio of 1 to 1, we will use 1 full capacity of fuel for this section. The next section is from 1 to 1 and a third. This section is 1 third of the maximum distance long, and using fuel at a rate of 3 to 1, we will again use 1 full capacity of fuel for this section. The final section is from 1 and a third to the final distance of 1.6. This works out to be 4 15ths of the maximum range, and using fuel at a rate of 9 to 1, we will use up 2.4 full capacities of fuel for this section. Adding up the fuel required for each section, we can see that this gives 4.4 full capacities of fuel required, which is a total of 22 units of fuel given the capacity of 5 units. If you would like to see this puzzle and others like it, visit thinkmaths.co.uk slash mathspuzzles. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any requests for future James Explains videos, leave them down in the comments.